Hey everybody, welcome to the first whip and chat of this channel. Is everybody excited that we're having a whip and chat? I'm excited. Um, and I promise not to talk about anything unhappy or modeling or, you know, you get the drill. I'm not going to be talking about my dad passing or anything like that. Um, we're just going to have a little discussion and check in and see how everybody's doing. Um, if you're new, WIP, W-I-P, stands for Work in Progress. So feel free to get your current WIP out and work alongside me or treat it like a podcast. And, you know, if I can just keep you company while you're, I don't know, doing housework, paying the bills, picking up kids at school, whatever it seems to be, then that's wonderful. Um, I actually have... I actually have several whips going right now. I think I have five going. I finished one, so there were six. So yes, I think there's five. Because two of them are gifts and the others are seasonal. So anyway, um, this is just one of them that says um, sparkly Christmas wishes and there's some ornaments and stuff. And so I'm making some headway, you know, slowly but surely. We're going to be working over here in this area today. So I'm going to see if I can get that little bit more in focus. Um, so how is everybody doing today? Is everybody having a great Friday and everybody excited about the weekend? I mean, you know, what's not to be excited about is the weekend for crying out loud. Is everybody done all of their Christmas shopping? Ha ha. <sighs> Some of us have barely started, but you know, that's a whole nother conversation. But I do have all of my diamond painting pens ready to go. Everybody is puttied in the multi-placers and blue waxed, which is my favorite wax when I use wax, which is not always, um, in the single placers. So you'll probably um, notice that I have them all ready to go all the time. I do. I have a different size multi-placer in the end of each pen. So I find if I just get them all ready to go when I start, I can usually go for quite a while and not have to change anything out. This is a little bit large, okay. And so I usually do that and then I don't have to refill anything, or, you know, or anything during the time that I'm working. So yeah, oops, and I just moved a few drills where I accidentally got them on the plastic instead of on the actual canvas. Okay, Wendy, nice job with that. Um, so anyway, everybody have plans for the weekend? Um, I have been working like a crazy person. I did have to go over and start removing items from my parents' home because like a lot of older Americans, they were in a reverse mortgage. Well, when that becomes really interesting is when they pass away. Because the social security rolls, if you didn't know this, this is important information if you know anybody that happens to have a reverse mortgage. The social security rolls, when they are notified that someone has passed, that is flagged by the reverse mortgage banks. And so they find out faster than you expect when somebody is no longer around. So yeah, just know that. Um, and in our case, the skilled nursing facility, um, you know, let social security know. And so yeah, things are happening way faster than I would like them to be happening, but okay, they are. So we will just work with that. Um, so yeah, so it's been kind of a crazy and hectic week, but other than that, um, you know, it hasn't been a bad week. It's just been, well, it hasn't been a great week, but it hasn't been a bad week. It's just been very hectic and there's been a lot to do and, you know, uh, grumble, grumble, groan, groan. Um, so, yep, that's been taking up a good deal of my time, but I think I'm getting a handle on most of it. Um, my brother and I are the only offspring and he's about four hours away so he's not around for a lot 
of what's going on. So that's been, um, you know, a lot for me, but that's okay. I can handle it. Whether I can or not, I'm handling it. So there you go. Um, so what else is everyone doing today? Anybody thinking about going to any kind of a Christmas program or um, anything exciting happening in your town? We have um, a harbor here in the county that I live in um, because we have a military base here that, um, you know, has uh, lots of military families. And so, you know, they like to come out to the harbor and, and uh, have some fun and see what's going on. So they do a lot of decorating and a lot of really, really cool stuff. So that's a lot of fun. So we'll probably, maybe we'll meander out there. Maybe we'll see if any of it's televised. Some years they televise and some years they don't. And I don't know what makes the determination. Maybe it's the person who videos, I don't know. But um, so yeah, we will, we will just see what's happening and how we feel tomorrow. Um, so, yeah. What kind of diamonds, diamond art work, whether that's a canvas or whether that's um, some other kind of project. What other kind of diamond artwork are you working on? Are you doing gifts? Are you just doing some to make you happy because you know when you're gifting don't forget to gift yourself because you deserve it you know you do so yeah and by the way have any of you been following what has been happening with a certain premium company who I shall not name but everyone knows and crafty chef diamond I mean, guys, wow. If you haven't been, you need to go to her channel and see what has gone on because it, it was it was really something. Um, yeah, it, it's really, you have to see it. I think it's important that, if especially if you order from said company, um, you really need to be a party to the information that's been flying around. Um, I I was surprised at how this relatively minor issue um, ended up being a much more major issue. And I, again, I, it just, the way it was handled does not make sense to me. From a business standpoint, it just seemed like somebody was cutting off their nose to spite their face. Um, but I do think that, you know, everyone needs to be aware of how things are dealt with. Um, because ultimately, um, she was banned um, from this situation. And the current order that she had going on was canceled. And her loyalty points that were somewhere in the 28,000 plus range or just gone like that um, because she received a canvas that was frayed, had you know some fraying that occurred and was seeking a replacement canvas. And I mean, and this is a person who orders a lot from this place and even when she when she ordered the canvas that in question at the same time she ordered six other canvases so this is not somebody that orders once in a blue moon this this is a loyal customer and and wow how that all played out was really something so if you have not had an opportunity to go to crafty chef diamond and look at what's happened um try to make time because i think it's an it's important enough that everyone be aware um, that apparently you can't be critical of some places um, without 
what looked to me to be overkill consequences. Um, but seriously, it's important for you to see that what's going on, especially if this company is your ride or die, as it is for an awful lot of people, um, you really should be aware of what can happen. Um, <laughs> apparently you don't get freedom of speech everywhere in the United States. Um, so yeah, go over to Crafty Chef Diamond. It's all happened in the last, I think the last 72 hours. So you don't even have to look up, you know, every video ever made by her. You do, all you need to do is, is just the last few days. Um, I think the first one is she, she has a canvas and it's, I think in the, th in the, not the thumbnail, but the, um, the caption, she said that she had received it from this company and that it, that she was disappointed. That's how it began. So again, worth your while to go and listen to it and make up your own mind. Um, and either way though, I think the information and how it transpired and, and what was said on both ends, she does share the emails that she received from the company. So, um, yeah, I, I just, I think it's, it's definitely, you know, a hundred percent important enough that you should just go ahead and check it out if you haven't so that you're aware and, um, you know, go from there. But, um, it was kind of heartbreaking because it was obvious how upsetting it was for her. The whole situation was upsetting you know, because she had been a loyal customer and because this was a relatively minor issue that, that didn't need to be out of control that much and did not need to be addressed the way it was addressed. And so, um, yeah, I, I just think it's important that, you know, go over there and check it out, Crafty Chef Diamond, the last few days so that you are aware and can see, you know, how things transpired. Um, yeah, that was, that was kind of a shocker. Um, I, 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 I'm just, I don't even know what to say about it because I was, I was so mystified why the canvas just wasn't replaced. I mean, in the, in the great scheme of things, it, it was a minimal expense. To the company to retain a customer that ordered seven canvases on Black Friday um, that probably averaged um, 60 or 70 dollars a piece so yeah it, it just was it was fascinating so yeah go check it out um, so yeah what's everybody else doing hmm? I cannot believe that we are already on the 8th of December. My gosh, my birthday is actually in 11 days. Not that I'm going to feel much like celebrating this year, but you know, and it's, which isn't like me. Usually I really enjoy it. You know, a lot of people say, oh my God, don't you just hate having your birthday so close to Christmas? Nope. I actually love it. Um, but you know, my family made a point of separating it out. Like it was not, it was not um, part of Christmas. It was its own, its own occasion and its own event. And so I never felt like I was aced out of anything. I always enjoyed it. It's, everything is beautiful. Everything is decorated for my birthday. Um, there's, you know, people are basically in a good mood because it's the holidays. Everybody is reflecting on, you know, what the the current year has been about and what they want to get ready for, to do in the new year. So I like it. I think it's usually a time of good cheer, um, like no other. So that's just really fun. So yeah, I love it. And normally I'm really happy and excited to have my birthday this time of year. Um, and you know, I'm basically a homebody. I like to be home. I think because I'm not so much, I'm 
driving here, driving there, doing something or, you know, doing something for somebody. So I like to just have some people over of my choosing and just kind of sit back and enjoy each other's company. And sometimes I haven't seen them for, you know, a while because things get busy this time of year from really, really from Halloween forward. I mean, you know, you all know how it is. Um, a lot of stuff starts happening and everybody's busy. Is You just don't see each other as much as you normally might. So I enjoy having a few select people that I get to choose. You know, just kind of come over and hang out and have some dinner and maybe play some board games or watch a good movie or, you know, just talk. I love to do those kind of things, but this year, again, it's going to be kind of rough. So... Um, probably not going to do so much of that this year, but that's okay. Um, so yeah. And you know, interestingly enough, <laughs> my birthday is the 19th. However, I was actually due on Christmas day and my mother said, you just had places to go, people to see and things to do. So per usual, you were early. Um, <laughs> Or, and that, and I didn't want to be in the hospital for Christmas. She's probably right on all those counts. Um, yeah, she, <laughs> maybe I just didn't want her to have to be in the hospital at Christmas. Anyway, um, but yeah, she was frustrated because since I was due on Christmas Day, she had picked out the name Holly Noel because she thought it was pretty. Um, I mean, you know, it wouldn't have been terrible, but since I was actually born at 1.46 in the morning on the 19th of December, way back in the late 60s, um, she called my dad because remember, this is way back. This is when men did not go into the delivery room. They were in the waiting room, you know, having a cigar and chewing the fat with the other potential fathers. Um, she called my dad and said, it's a girl. And he was so happy because they had a son and so they wanted a girl. And so he said, you mean it's Wendy? Because he liked the song, um, you know, uh, everyone knows it's Wendy. You might have heard it once or twice. Um, anyway, and she said, well, I guess so. <laughs> and so didn't really argue with him. So. Yep, yeah, and it was me, and here I am. Um, I've never liked my name. Always hated it because it's boring. It's dull. It has no pizzazz whatsoever. Uh, even my mother was like, oh, I had all different kinds of ways I was going to spell it. And he said, and I mean W-E-N-D-Y. <sighs> so, unfortunately, he got his way. So... But, you know, it was the first gift he ever gave me the day I was born. And so I will never change it, even though I don't particularly like it and never felt like it fit me, who I am as a person. But he liked it, and that was good enough. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> that was the, the how, how it went and how I got my name. Partly, I, it, I get very frustrated. Was one of the reasons I don't like it is because you wouldn't think five letters would be that difficult to pronounce. But you'd be surprised how many people say Wendy. And I have to say, mm, no, it's Wendy. Well, what's the difference? Well, besides the obvious, it's a totally different vowel. Um, one is my name and one is the weather condition. So, yeah, that's usually what I tell them. But even the ones that try to correct it, that are mispronouncing it, often don't stick with that. So. <laughs> I just figure, yeah, I'll just move on. Um, so, yeah, I've just never, never liked it. Um, and he wanted to call me Wendy Ann, and my mother said, absolutely not. So, um, he said, well, then what are we going to call her for your middle name? And uh, my mother said, well, and by now it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. They've been talking, and she said, well... You know, she was born at 1.46 in the morning. How about Dawn? He said, oh, Dawn, I like it. Okay. So that ended up my name. 
Well, it was kind of a far cry from Holly Noel to become Wendy Dawn, but you know, it worked. It's been my name now for well over a half a century. So I have gotten used to it and all the pros and cons with it. So yeah, that's, that's the story of my name, guys. <laughs> Hope I didn't bore you to tears with that, but anyway. Um, so, so that's coming up, but this will be the first birthday that I haven't had e at least one of my parents present. So, and I, I'm thankful though that I had them for as long as I did. A lot of people are not that lucky. So, um, I'm grateful that I had them as long as I did. Uh, so yeah. So, what are you all asking Santa for? Do you have a whole wish list? Do you have one or two items you're kind of really hoping for? Um, have you thrown enough clues? Because my Santa is a little bit oblivious. I, I really, I have to start throwing clues like in August if I want to make sure that he understands that there's something I particularly am interested in. Um, but you know, by this time I expected him to fairly well know, but he really not. I mean, not for lack of trying. He, he just doesn't pick up on it a lot. So I have to, you know, sort of nudge him in the right direction. So I usually start nudging, um, fairly early in the season so that he has time both to see it, understand it, experience it, ask questions about it, and find it. So he can put something under the tree. So yeah, that's kind of more or less how it goes around here. Um, and I really didn't have much this year. I mean, I have most everything I could ever ask for or want. I mean, honestly, how many more diamond paintings can I effectively house? I mean, really, you guys. Not that I, you know, am opposed to having more. It's just, oh, uh, I'm so running out of space. Um, that's not to say that I don't enjoy the occasional diamond painting accessory. Or there might be a particular canvas at one of the company, one of the um, premium companies that I really like that I've been eyeing and haven't actually purchased for myself. You know, those kind of things. So, so yeah. Um, but I will go over that with him. We've been so busy trying to get everything done that it's just, we haven't even hardly spoken to one another because it's like we've been working so much. So, Yep, you're probably gonna hear my dogs barking in a minute because somebody is coming in the door. So I'm gonna apologize in advance if you start to hear barking. Um, yeah, so that's what's been happening around here. Not, not a lot except that, you know, we've just been really busy. And I had to get a storage facility because it's like, I just could not, I just could not decide on some things and I, I couldn't have that going on and try to empty out the house. So some of it, I just had to go, okay, I'm just going to have to get a storage facility and go through it after the first of the year when I have some more time. Cause I, there's just, there just was no way to do it. So, um, and I just, you know, storage facilities annoy me because <laughs> they're just so overpriced and you know, because they know they've got you over a barrel. If you have to get one, you have to get one. And if you know, you know, um, so yeah, it was ridiculous price, but you know, uh, gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. So I did, um, but I think ultimately, you know, it's gonna be fine. I, it's just, you know, everything that, that hit right now just wasn't workable. I had to give myself a little more time. So. So storage facility is the storage facility and it'll be fine and eventually I will clean it out and then it won't be an issue. So I'm just trying to have a little bit of grace with myself because um, 
This year has been a bummer, really, for everyone in my family for different reasons, but literally from start to finish, from January forward, it's just been uh, one turmoil after another. So I have very high hopes for the new year, and uh, hopefully it's not going to disappoint because, wow, has it been a thing. Um, so, but, uh, and I've done probably half my Christmas shopping. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, I do realize that I'm running out of days. So I'm going to have to step up the pace on that just a smidge, which I will. Um, and uh, I, you know, I won't lie, most of it I was able to get from places that will bring it to my door because um, my ability to, to get out there in my electric scooter and purchase and get through the line and not take out somebody's toddler. Oh my God, you guys, people do not watch their kids. Um, anyway, it's a little bit impaired. So a lot of my shopping had to be online. So it was, but there's only so far you can go with that. Eventually you, you have to have the ability at some point <laughs> to say, okay, um, there are still some things I need, so I'm going to have to, you know, try to do as much as I can, if, as few stores as possible. So then it becomes like a war strategy, you know, like, you're like, okay, what can I get at this store? And while I'm there, can I pick up this too? Because if so, then that's the store I'm going to put it on the agenda. And if not, okay, how many stores can I do in a day? Because, you know, Stamina becomes a thing after a while. So, yeah, that's kind of, you know, where things have been. Um, but I think I'm going to make it. So that's, that's really the important part to me is being able to um, get finished what I need to get finished. Get everything going and um, getting it wrapped and under the tree in a workable time frame. First, I have to put up the tree. Uh -huh. So that's gonna be interesting. I will tell you though that my tree is in my house. So I'm headed in the right direction. I just have to actually take it out of the box, get it set up and, you know, decorate it. And so then I can, I can put the presents under it and then I'll be more motivated to wrap. So yeah, what an interesting year this has been. So uh, tell me in the comments, do you guys have, do you get a real tree or do you get an artificial tree? Um, my whole childhood, my family always went up to the Santa Cruz Mountains because we're from Northern California. And there's a place up there called Four Winds Christmas Tree Farm. And I loved it because in addition to having the Christmas tree farm, they also had big, beautiful apple orchards. Best apples on the planet. I mean, they were just so wonderful and they were nice and fresh and crispy. And the guy that ran it always gave me one free every year. And then of course my mother felt obligated to then buy some, which I'm sure was probably the plan. But in any case, I loved him and he loved me and I was devastated when as a teenager, he finally passed when I was a teenager. And oh, I missed him terribly for a number of years after that. But yeah, he was a wonderful guy and best apples around you guys. Oh, so good. So yep, and I always had a good time. And, and I will say, I don't care what kind of fragrance you get, there's nothing better than the smell of a real Christmas tree. It's just, it's so wonderful. But, that being said, when my kids were probably hmm, in that 11, 12 age group and fully engrossed with major allergies, especially my older son, I have three boys and my oldest boy uh, was such an allergy sufferer that when we finally did decide, you know what, we need to, we need to see about this artificial tree thing. Um, it was such a relief because he was miserable, just miserable. 
uh, he's a fall winter allergy. So, you know, mold spores and, um, you know, all those things that are, that come with fall. Um, he just was, uh, he was, a, he was a mess. So when we finally went to an artificial tree, he did much better. He didn't have, you know, congestion. His nose wasn't plugged up one minute running the next. And, you know, his asthma wasn't being triggered. I mean, it just, it was just a better situation all the way around. And I found out that, hey, <laughs> nice thing. Um, artificial trees do not leak sap all over everything. So, so yes, um, I, I have been perfectly fine with it, but I do miss the smell of a real tree because there's just nothing quite like that. It's just kind of wonderful on multiple planes. So yeah, that's the one thing I miss, but I do not miss the needles falling off the tree, the sap all over everything, the kids and I sneezing, coughing, watery eyes, um, itchy mouth, everything, because you know, allergies are just the 10th level of hell for most of us. So, yep, so every, and also I like the fact that um, my tree has the, it's pre-lit, it has the lights already on it. Um, and so that's nice. You don't have to worry about putting the lights on it every year. They're already there. They're not tangled. They're not messed up. They're just, you just undo the tree and unfold the branches and straighten them out and plug it in and it goes. So it's kind of wonderful. No sap, no spiders or other critters, no allergens, no needles falling off. I mean, it just, it has its perks, people. And the older that I have gotten, the more I appreciate those perks because, yeah, nothing worse than having to do 10 minutes of tree and then 30 minutes of cleanup. So, yes. So it's in the house and ready to go. I just have to uh, find time and energy and resourcefulness at the same time and open it up and get it ready to go so I can start decorating it. Um, this year, my brother and I spent, the day after Thanksgiving, we spent five and a half hours, you guys, divvying up all of my parents' Christmas stuff. Now, my parents, my mother was 72 when she passed in 2012, and my father was 89, and they were married 53 years, and they had two children. When I tell you that they accumulated stuff, I mean, they accumulated stuff. I, it was just, it was, it was a level of insanity. I can't even tell you. Fortunately, there wasn't a lot of arguing because my brother and I have very different tastes in what we like, but um, we didn't really know that till we got over there, but we were both relieved that really there were only two items we both liked. And so we just decided one took one and one took the other and you know, we were ready to call it a day, but there were so many boxes. There were, it was just every time we thought we were close, we'd find more boxes of Christmas stuff. And we were just like, how can this be possible? And yet it was, but we used to call my mother the spirit of Christmas because she really was. I mean, it was just, it was, it was her thing. And, and nobody was cuter about Christmas than she was. Every single year, she'd say, that's the best tree we ever had. <laughs> it's like, mother, it's the same tree. Oh, no, it's it's decorated differently. This one's just so much better than last year. Every year. So, yeah, she was so cute. And her name was Joy. So, a lot of the ornaments and decorations had her name on it. Which, for a long time, was why this time of year was hard for me, too. Because her name was everywhere. Right? So, um... Yeah, that, that took some getting used to. Um, but after a while, I, I really appreciated that her name was everywhere. Because it, it made it feel more like she was around, you know. So, yeah. So now this year, it's going to be interesting. Because now, this poor tree cannot possibly support all the stuff that I brought home that was my parents. And all the stuff that is mine. So... We're going to have to alternate stuff or 
we're gonna have to get a second tree or something because holy cow is there a lot of stuff I can't even tell you guys um, so yeah it was uh, really something but yep looking forward to seeing all of it kind of meld together in a tree um, because you know my kids are grown too my oldest son is 34 and my middle son just turned 30 in November um, he was actually out here uh, they were visiting when that happened so it was kind of nice we got to go out to dinner and, and celebrate with him and you know tell him he's getting old and you know all that kind of stuff and so that was a lot of fun for the whole family we normally don't get to see him I have one my middle son moved to Texas um, my oldest son is in Florida so makes it hard to see my grandbabies too and I miss my boys uh, very much so it was really fun though to have them here even though they came out to help because we kind of knew that their grandfather you know was not going to be leaving skilled nursing and we needed to figure out what to do with the house and you know get stuff out and so they came out really to help me do that and you know thank god they did bless their little hearts I don't know what I would have done if they hadn't been able to come out and and help um Plus, it's been a lot of years, you know. My youngest son, the one that still lives here with me with the special needs, um, he is 26. He'll be 27 in March. So it's been a long time since they've all been under one roof and didn't bring wives, girlfriends, or, or their children with them. So it really was, you know, I just got to see my kids for a change. I know they're all grown men, but they're still my babies. And they will always be. And uh, I will always be overprotective of them. So, you know, think Mother Dragon. Because um, that's exactly how I am. Um, mess with me. That's okay. Don't mess with my babies. Because God help you. Um, and I don't think that will ever change. So, it was good to have them here, too. And, I, and they got to see their grandpa um, a final time, too, before he passed, which was also very important. So I'm glad that that happened and that they handled it as well as they did. There were a few tears and, you know, but he got to tell them he loved them and they got to tell him that they loved him. And, you know, really, at the end of the day, that was the important part. So, so yeah, it was all good. Um... And they got to ask some questions that they wanted to ask about child rearing. I, I personally, you know, felt happy that they asked me. That means they thought I did an adequate enough job that it was worth asking me how to take care of their children. So I'll take it. Can't really get a better testimonial than that, right? So, yeah, we had some conversations about the latest thing going on with my grandsons. And, um... Yeah, it was just was a good, it was a good visit, but, you know, now I miss them twice as much because they were here, you know, fairly recently at the beginning of November. And so now here it is, you know, we're getting ready for Christmas and they are not here. So that's hard. But, you know, they're, they've been good. They've called, it's so cute. It's funny how you do a role reversal as they age. They've been calling to check on me because one of the things I did when my dad passed is I went off the grid and boy, that was the best thing I could have done, you guys. Honest to God, not answering the phone or dealing with anything that wasn't urgent has been fantastic. Talk about bringing a level of peace that I haven't had for some time. I don't think we really appreciate how much of a slave to these phones we actually are. But, ooh, we really, really are. So, yeah, it's been nice to just be able to sit and think and reflect and try to make some plans. Not really making decisions. I don't think that this is a good time to make decisions, uh, especially big ones. I think that needs to wait a little while. So, um, so yeah. It's been, um, it's been kind of nice, but I, and I did tell them, hey, you know what, I'm going to be off the grid, so 
you know, you don't need to, you don't need to worry. You don't need to call and check on me. Um, but I, you know, I'm just not going to be dealing with phone calls unless it's, it's truly an emergency or truly urgent. And so, um, so my middle son did pretty well. He, he waited two or three days before he had to text me going, mom, how you doing? Just wanted to check on you and tell you I love you. And you know, see how you're doing, which was really sweet. Um, my older son, uh, I don't think he even made it 24 hours, but you know, he's my, my biggest ADHD. So for him, 24 hours is like, you know, eight days. So I wasn't too surprised. So I just sent them kissing emojis and a big heart. So they knew I loved them and I was fine. I was just still staying off the grid. Um, so yeah, it's been, um, it's been a little bit more peaceful, not answering every single phone call and telemarketer and everything that ha I just, ugh. especially, you know, I was not pleased with the social worker at the skilled nursing facility. I mean, okay, number one, dingbat. Number two, personality of a rectal thermometer. We all know these kind of people. And number three, she's not even a nice person. And I thought, boy, is she in the wrong line of work? Um, but yeah, she was just miserable to deal with. So I, I just, I was, I was just as glad to be done with her as I was to be done with the facility. Um, hospice was pretty good. Um, other than the fact that we disagreed with them about placing him in a facility, but they basically told us if we didn't, then they would have to go off of the case because they didn't think he was safe in between their visits. So basically it was a hospice ultimatum. So we said, well, okay, because we knew without their help, um, there would be no way he could stay home. So either way, it looked like he was gonna go. So, you know, we went along with it, but it was tough, you know? It was not what you would call a unanimous decision, but ultimately it probably sustained him and allowed a level of comfort. I don't know that there was that much. I think if it was up to him, he would rather have just stayed home and perished of his own devices and, and just been done with it. But, um, yeah, I think it was probably for the better that he had 24-7 care, but, but yep. Um, interesting thing that did happen is um, I was seeing him weekly, and my brother was seeing him probably monthly while he was in there. And so my brother called me. He went to see him, and he said, do you know what happened to Dad's wedding ring? I said, isn't he wearing it? Because when I had seen him the last, the week before, he had been wearing it. He said, nope, and I don't see it anywhere in his stuff. And I said, well, that's interesting, because when I was there last week, he was wearing it. And I said, does he have his watch on? He goes, actually, no, now that you mention it. I said, okay, well, he had both of those on last time I saw him, which had at that point had been like eight days ago. So we inquired about it and oh yeah they had no idea what, what happened to it and yeah they no idea oh my gosh you know what does it look like is it a simple band and i said no no it's not a simple band and really um it's a custom job that they had made and we will know if we see it on anyone that it belongs to him Oh, well, we'll, you know, we'll certainly keep looking and we'll ask around. Yeah, do that. I was furious because, like I said, it's a, it was a custom ring that matched my mother's. And so um, I was really angry. <laughs> so, but after, after telling them, hey, we're going to recognize it if we see it anywhere and uh, there will be charges pressed. Well, lo and behold, they managed to find it. The very next day, we got a phone call. We found your dad's wedding ring and his, his watch. Oh, wonderful. So glad that that turned up. 
they did offer to um, ultimately, well, they offered to go ahead and pay us. But, you know, how do you put a price on something that was custom made? I mean, yes, we could price out the gold and we could price out, you know, the time and material it took to do the engraving, but you know, that wasn't the point. So we were very upset about it. Um, but subsequently, after making it clear that not only were we going to be looking, but we would know if we saw it, it materialized in one of the nurse's carts. Imagine that. So we did get it back. So I was really happy about that. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I toyed with the idea of having earrings made out of it, um, since they are a matched pair, but I don't, I don't know. There's probably something better to do with it, but, um, I'm just glad I have both of them now. And, um, yeah, so, but yep, a couple of days after we picked it up, the social worker tried to call me again and I was just like, nope, I'm, I'm just not talking to you. I don't have to any longer and I'm not going to. So I do not feel that she was the important part of my father's stay at their facility for sure. In fact, she was the one that was most often not even there. She was, you know, gone a lot and nobody seemed to know where she went or why she wasn't there. And I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. Must be a salaried employee because, you know, if she were hourly, somebody would have missed her. So, yeah, not not my favorite cup of tea. Um, but like I said, aside from disagreeing with hospice about when to have to put him into skilled nursing, they really did do a phenomenal job and we were very thankful that they were available um, as often as they were. So um, we felt like they were keeping a watch over him and that, you know, they were not going to let something terrible happen on their watch. And they didn't. And I was really pleased with that. And, and they respected, you know, our decisions and how we thought about things. And, um, so yeah, I mean, I can't really stress enough that, um, it was a pretty decent hospice program. So, um, so if you have somebody that you need to put on a hospice program, don't hesitate because just extra eyes and ears is a, such a blessing when somebody you love has is getting ready to move on to the next phase, right? So, yep, feel free to make sure that you get them on there. So, yeah. So, yeah, now it's just a, a question of trying to deal with missing them and, and getting on to the new normal, whatever that is going to be. Don't know yet, but we'll see. Um, on top of all of this, my best friend since childhood, we've been friends for over 40 years. Um, she had to have open heart surgery yesterday. And thankfully, everything went five, fine. She ended up having to have a they went in for one reason, and then they, when they were there, they figured out that she needed to have a valve replaced. So they went ahead and did it while they were there. So, yay. So I'm hoping that, because um, she's gonna be living here with me for a while till she buys her own place. So um, I was glad to hear that things went well, and she's expected to make as close to a full recovery as she can. So that was very good news and I was very happy to know that that was going to be the case. So yeah, but I was really hoping that we were going to be together this Christmas and um, it doesn't look like it. it. looks like after New Year's probably because I imagine she'll be in the hospital a while and then probably skilled nursing for a while after that. But um, I feel like they may have finally gotten down to whatever was going on because she was kind of sick on and off there for quite a while. So I'm hoping that this will actually allow her to fully heal and recover because boy, is she depleted. Her poor little body has been through the ringer ever since summer. So, so yeah, lots of stuff happening. 
for sure. I went to see if my little Finian was up this morning. So he's been up for the last three days. And uh, he looked at me with one sleepy eye and decided not to get out from under his blanket. Usually if I walk over to his tank and sing good morning to him, he comes right over to the door and waits for me to open it so I can pick him up. And we can hang out together and have breakfast together. Well, this morning he looked at me like, yeah, no, it's not happening. I said, all right, will you go ahead and sleep? So I just left him covered up and left his heat emitter going. And uh, yeah, he's been happy as a clam. So if he wants to go back to sleep for a while, that's fine. If he wants to get up tomorrow, that's okay too. Um, he ate really well yesterday. So his tummy is full. He had plenty of water. He's nice and hydrated. He's got his cozy blanket wrapped uh, one under him and one around him. And um, he's snug as a bug in a rug. So, okay. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if he's going to be up and about for, for Christmas or not. Maybe he'll sleep it off. I don't know. But we'll see. Um, so, yeah. So tell me in the comments what you guys are going to be up to. Are you hosting Christmas this year? Are you cooking for lots of people? Are you going away? Are you traveling? And if you are traveling, oh my God, please be safe and my condolences because uh, anybody that has to withstand TSA at this point, you know, God love you. Um, I hope that you have a wonderful holiday season because, whoo, that's like asking a lot. All right, guys. Well, we're coming up here on 52 minutes. So I've been talking your ear off for nearly an hour. But thank you for joining me, and I can't believe that there's over 200 subs now. Thank you, you guys. You guys are just the best. I can't even tell you. I love all of you, and I hope Santa is good to each and every one of you because you all deserve to have lots and lots of presents and overstuffed stockings and all that kind of good stuff that goes along with Christmas. So, all right, guys. Um, I am going to be doing an unboxing. I got a canvas a while back. Um, it's still available, though. And um, there was a lot happening, and so it never got its fair due. It didn't get an unboxing, so I'm going to give it one. So there will be one of those happening in the next day or two. And um, we will go from there. Uh, I did talk to fan cells today. I don't know what happened, but they, they have real problems with their shipping. Um, they shipped it out. It got through customs on December 1st, and it hasn't moved. And I said, okay, it's been a week. Why has there been no movement? And they said something about there's a problem or some kind of delay with the custom clearance in our country. I said, okay, there are some things on there that are supposed to be Christmas gifts. So if you can't get it here, then I need you to cancel the order and refund the money. So we'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys informed. But anyway... Um, again, it, if you're going to deal with fan cells, I probably am not going to. Um, I have one other order out with them at the same time. Um, so if I get them, <laughs> I will do an unbagging. However, I think this will be the last time because I just, there's no excuse. I mean, you know, I can order from Timu and have it in 10 or 12 days. There's no reason for it to take five or six weeks from these people. So I probably will not continue with them. But if you enjoy their stuff and they do have unusual things that not all the other companies have all the time, just remember, order with plenty of time to wait and still get stuff done. Because, wow, um, can, they, can they delay? Holy smokes. All right, guys. We'll have a good Friday evening. And I will talk to you guys really soon. Love y'all. Bye, guys.